And welcome back to Stave Decay 2 in the Beta Lethal Zone. I'm your host, Get Good Fox, and I hope you are ready because uh, we're going to be going to the next home site. Barricaded Strip Mall. Yeah, that's right, boys. So I've heard some comments that said, you know, maybe what I should do is, you know, don't, don't worry about beating the game and stuff like that. Why don't we just kind of get through the bases? Maybe, you know, and so you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. Instead of closing out the game, I think we're just going to go from base to base. And I guess I should squish this guy while I'm here. I think that's a pretty good idea. So what we're going to do is, after we do this base, I'm not even going to clean out all the play guards. I'm just going to pack up and I'm going to move to... Oh, looks like we got ferals. Let me see where they are. I'm not sure where they are. Okay. There he is. It's pretty common for him to be right by the door, I find. All right, there we go. All right, so this base has what appears to be three play guards guarding it, but only two of them are visible. And what that means is that there is a third undiscovered play guard that's guarding it. And so what I think we're going to do is instead of just clearing out everything out of Drucker County and whatnot, I think what we're going to do is capture this base, and we'll probably also capture Sasser. I should have done that a little earlier. I wasn't thinking about it, though. And then we're just going to probably just move in with our current community and just start plowing right into the next bases. I think that's a pretty good idea. Because, you know, there's other playthroughs we can do. There's a whole bunch of stuff we can do. I got, we, got, we got plenty of things to do. And the whole theme of this is supposed to be Hyper Community World Tour. So that's what I think I want to focus it on. And, if, you know, if you want kind of like standard gameplay, you know, you're enjoying the grind, the farm, etc., don't worry. Well, well, we can do more playthroughs about that. This one is supposed to be like a refresher. So the first thing I want to do is just locate all of the play guards. And the reason for that is because I'm probably going to go with the gorilla strategy for knocking out these play guards because we don't have scent block. Okay, so this is all three of them. We'll start with this one here. The gorilla strategy involves rapidly changing targets, essentially. I've demonstrated it a few times, but I'll show you again. Because why not? It's a, it works. It's a good strategy. Of course, I'm going to clean some of these guys out. Not to clean all of them out, but, you know, some of them. Ah, oh, this looks like a great choke point. Oh, you're going to set me on fire, I see. Didn't realize that that's where the gas was. That's not, it's like, a, it's not a big deal. It'll be fine. We got a cure with us too, so no biggie. Okay, area secure. Well, mostly secure. Okay, so how does the gorilla strategy work? The gorilla strategy works like this. We are going to damage the play guard to the point that it reaches its uh, defensive gas. And then instead of continuing to fight the play guard, what we're going to do instead is just run away. So we're going to do four hits on it. Two, three, four. Now here come the reinforcements. And what we're going to do is instead of fighting the reinforcements, we're just going to get in our car like this. And now we're just going to go to the next one. Because remember, all the zombies are coming to protect this play guard. There goes the door. And that's perfectly fine. They can do that. You want to defend that location? Well, I'm leaving. You are rushing to defend a location that I'm leaving. So it's all good. So all the zombies go there. And now what we're going to do is hit the next play guard. Now, play guards do not regenerate. Their health does not come back. At least in an unmodified version of the game. Oh. 
and now what we can do is, like I said, since the zombies were all busy defending their base that I'm no longer at, we can just, and like I said, since the health will save, we can do this. Where? Um, if there's two, there's three. Let's get in here with our allies and, you know, fight these off for a bit. It's interesting how, like, characters with body armor are... Basically, zombies with body armor. I, I mean, I guess these survivors don't have body armor. I was going to say, isn't it kind of curious that how some people have body armor and they're not affected by fire, whereas these guys have body armor and they're just completely unaffected? Now, if this was like an incidental thing, you might be thinking, well, God, like, there's a whole lot of ferals here. That, that was just a spawn of ferals. You know, that's not going to happen every time. That's just lethal zone being lethal zone. Okay, so what we're going to do, get my stamina back. We cleared the area. I do want to shut this just so the zombies do have to pound their way through the door. We're going to get four hits on this. One. Two. Three. Four. Like I said, the Plagar is going to remember its health. So now I'm just going to go out of here. Get in my car. Once again, the door is protected. Now, this might not be quite as effective if... If you weren't using an Impaler. And that's because... Uh, the, the, the zombies would be able to get onto your hood, and that would be bad. So that means you would have to park in a way that both shields your door and shields your hood. But we're using the Impaler, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we're going to go to the third Plague Art. Oops, and I'm going to crash into something. Part, part of the technique, don't worry about it, folks. Um, same thing. Yeah, we might have to clear some initial zombies. Not a big deal, though. I see a horde right over there. Could just be a bloater, though. I feel like there's a glitch in the game that is causing zomb the bullets to pass through bloaters, or even just some zombies in general. So we might have accidentally nicked the plague art there. Like I believe the fire trip. Oh, oh, that was lucky. We got really lucky there. All right, so. We don't have, you know, we, we've called in the enemy reinforcements, so we're just going to go to the next one. I got lucky in the sense that, like, that probably should have been a blood plague bite right there. But like I said, it wouldn't have been a big deal because we do have a cure on us. So now what we can do is return to this location. And continue beating these guys up. Now, why did I leave there? It's because the zombies were already on me. You know, we're not really trying. It's our, not our goal to really fight all that many zombies. You know, we'll burn some of the initial ones out of the way. Now we can continue attacking. It's only... See that? Look how, look how it's already taking, like, its next stage of damage. That's because it saves its health. Now the zombies are still trying to get here. They're like, wait! Wait! Don't leave! And this feral, you know, he, he might be on the car door, but it doesn't matter. Oh, it actually kind of does matter. So that's interesting. We just learned that he can beat up the engine by getting on that. That's interesting. Good to know. Now we can attack this location because the zombies are rushing to defend that other location. I might even repair because I think we're okay here. I'm going to prefer not to shoot the pyro launcher just because it will draw enemies over. But you notice how now that I'm coming back, so some people, you know, you might be analyzing this and you're like, well, you're, you're fighting a lot of zombies the first time here. Well, see the second time, not a lot of enemies here, is there? Okay, juggernaut in sight. Not as many enemies here on the second time. Because we cleared them out the first time. Now, you know, it is lethal zone, so it's not to say that you couldn't have... You know, it's not to say that more zombies can't just appear, because they can. It's lethal zone. So now I'm just going to burn the feral. Why do I burn the feral? Eh, buy me time to get to the next location. Squish him off. 
Now we can return to this Plague Art, which should be nearly dead. I see a horde over there, so I, let's just hit this one instead. We can just bounce around like this. Let's go ahead and squish a few guys. Very nice. And once again, like, look well, look what's defending the heart. What, three zombies are here? Not that big of a deal. Look at this, this the lone defender of the plague heart. Let's get in there and do some damage. Why not? Looks like we just got two hits on it there. Like, that that was actually quite a bit of damage there. Same thing. I'll just put a fire here. The Pharaoh will get ignited by the fire or touch the back of the vehicle. They can't get on the trunk. So they're, they're going to try, though. And they're, you know, like I said, they're coming to defend the Plagar. Well, I'm, I'm moving to the next one. I'm not even worried about it. These guys here, they're none the wiser. We're not going to get their attention. And as you can see, it's all cleared out. Now, if I want to... I'm just going to close all the doors. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to do it as a safety precaution. Just like that. Here we go. And it saves its health. You can see all the cracks in it. That's a dead plague art. Now we're gonna go. Let's go back for this one next. Look at that, the zombies are rushing in to defend, but I'm leaving. I'm leaving them in the dust. It's no big deal. So this is another strategy that you can use. Okay, this isn't a good place to park, apparently. The gorilla style strategy. Take advantage of the fact that Plague Arts have a, uh, they remember their health. I think it's pretty useful when, uh, I would say you should probably use it if you are going for a, um, a melee kill without a, without a scent block. You're doing melee kills without a scent block, so these guys are respawns. Like I said, just because it works you know, doesn't mean that it can't have... Uh, you know, you can have some things happen. Absolutely. But I can still get my stamina back. And now we can finish it off. There we go. Very clean. And we've got one more to go. And aside from, you know, a little bit of a mishap I had there, you know, I got bit for being, like, dumb. We're doing pretty good. Let's give this car a nice little spin. Like this. Looks like the reinforcements are here. But um, despite the fact that it's two hordes, look how few zombies it is. It's two hordes, technically, but it only consisted of about five zombies. These guys here appear to be just some stragglers. And I can easily just give them the Squisheroni. Just like that. Okay. Now... If you didn't use this technique, let's say you wanted to stay and you wanted to melee all of these zombies down, well, what you would have to do is you would have to deal with all of the reinforcements. And what this strategy does is, well, why deal with them? No reason to deal with all those reinforcements. That's a feral. You want to try it? You sure you do. Not going to help you, though. He's going to set himself on fire. He's going to set me on fire. That's okay, though. 
Okay, let's go ahead and claim us a base. Actually, let's... Yeah, we can claim the base and then take a screenshot. The order doesn't matter to me that much. The squish. I gotta stay away from these plague zombies, or I'm a gunner. Ah, you'll be fine. Yikes. Too loud. Okay, so let's explore all of the rooms. This place has a lot of rooms, I'd like to point out. It is a strip mall after all. We could make this place into a home. Okay. Then in here, and we got a back room. And then we gotta check the other side. And two more rooms to check. Looks like we're safe for now. And we don't even have to kill any zombies. Awesome. Let's move in. The Zeds may not have generals, but they still have something. So here we are, the barricaded strip mall, potential home site. A walled in set of shops with plenty of usable space. If we have time to tear down or refit some of the stuff, there's a lot of salvageable value in a wide array of stores here. It uh, requires eight people, which is the standard amount for the largest bases, and it requires 3,500 influence. Rather pricey, but we are ready to pay the price to move in. And... Here we are. Let's go get our... Well, while that's happening, we can go ahead and grab our nice little screenshot. Get a nice picture while, uh, you know, I, I, this is actually the perfect time of the day to do it. Because, like, the, the game does have different levels of lighting. Not just obviously... Obviously, light is different between day and night. But uh, it does change lighting based on the stages of the day as well. And this is a really good time because... Uh, the light is the most neutral right now. Later on in the day, there's a little more of a red tint, like an orange tint from, you know, as the, as the sun is beginning to set. And I'm not saying it's bad or anything, but in terms of just trying to make your base look, you know, trying to get a nice looking screenshot with neutral colors, like a day, like it's kind of, you know, I don't know if you've ever shopped for light bulbs, but light bulbs come in different kinds of colors, like cool or warm. Well, one of the light bulb colors is called daylight, and that's because it is a, the the light is supposed to be a color very similar to just what day what daytime would look like, and that's what I'm going for right here. I just want that neutral daylight color. Here it is. So this looks like a pretty good spare picture. There we go. This looks like a pretty good spot for a picture. And there it is. So you got the quick ER on the left and the Sud City. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Okay. That's good enough. I, I like that picture. And now let's park the car and we can see what we're dealing with. Uh, this space is... Uh, one thing I know off the top of my head is that the barricaded strip mall is well known for a large quantity of built-ins. So we're probably going to have to repair a bunch of them. So let's... Uh, let me get inside the walls. Since I am almost blood plagued... Okay, so yes, the urgent care is broken, so let's get it repairing. Only two minutes or so. Um, this is clearable, so let's... Okay, so what we're looking at... I forgot. We're looking at three large facilities, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have, like, let me count one more time. Let me use my mouse. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Possibly eight small facilities. Some of these facilities are debatable in their value. So, like, although eight sounds like a lot, we will see which ones are actually, you know, like, I won't count a facility as a full facility if the facility isn't particularly good. But three and eight sounds very promising. So over here we've got a liquor uh, this is a clearable facility. It's going to give us 10 building materials, 12 jugs of ethanol, a bottle of 30-year scotch, uh, one bottle of imported vodka, and a bottle of premium tequila. So that's just, you know, money. That, that's stuff we could sell. Um, over here, we just have an ordinary bed. Nothing special about it. It is uh, the upgraded bed, so we are losing one material per day as long as this is up. But let's get rid of it. And then we have a laundromat. And the laundromat is another one of these special clearables. They take longer, but we'll get 250 
uh, parts, and you could think of that as 250 influence, since parts are related to influence. But we still have this, so let's go ahead and upgrade this before all of our building materials explode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get a staging area going. That way we can build quicker. Now, the urgent care is a... Um, that is a medical facility, so we don't need to build a, an infirmary. We also don't need to build a gym, because this is equal to a level two. The Taekwondo gym is equal to a level two gym. So that's, that's a really good facility right there. It's, I don't think there's any extra bonuses. Oh, training action, built-in mats, extra training speed. Um, I don't really use the training options, but it is a bonus, so I would call it maybe like one and one quarter facilities. Uh, we looks like we can't really fit anything good in there. Over here, we have a, now this would be the opposite. So this is a normal everyday latrine and uh, it doesn't, I don't think it's an enhanced latrine. I don't think it's a level two. Uh, obviously we would need plumbing to really make the most of this. Uh, the latrine is not super great. So once again, I would not count this as a full facility. Our command center does not appear to be any different than normal. So it's a normal command center. This storage is also normal. Over here we have a high-end kitchen. It has seriously good cookware, so you're able to cook things about a, a bit faster. Could be useful in the event you are cooking, but to really get usage out of cooking, one, you're going to have knowledge of cooking. And honestly, if you're really doing a cooking build, you probably have both of the cooking skills. So it's a pretty high investment thing. So like, you know, it's, the value really varies. Let's go ahead and get building prep going. This is gonna increase our building speed and let's go ahead and do this one as well. Uses up a lot of parts, but you know, we're gonna get all those parts back at the laundromat. But the main thing is it's gonna increase our speed. So let me think, what do we wanna build here? I want, let's get our, let's plop our false small facilities in. Let's put the shooting range out. Actually, let's build a workshop here. Let's build the shooting range here. We would, this outdoor facility is important because the still will only fit outdoors. Um, so we got one, two, three, four. What are the other facilities that I want? I probably do want a crafting still. The crafting still is only gonna fit outside. Let me go ahead and get this going. And... Let me just get this building for now. Like, well, I'm trying to think of what else I would want to build. That's the thing about small facilities. There comes a point where you've kind of got them all, and you're like, I don't know what I, I mean. I don't know what I don't really need anything else. The still can go here. We could put a hydroponics indoors, but we don't have that. So let's go with the still. The still is something I absolutely would build. And then we can set up a lounge because that doesn't use as many. Uh, and let's just start getting all of these upgrading. Okay, so we've used up all of our labor. Really helpful, though. Like, this is building things much, much faster, which is pretty nice. Okay, so in the meantime, let's see. Where's Sasser at? Sasser only has one play guard guarding it. That is good. So let's go ahead and cure our existing blood plague. Easy to do, since we have a, um... A pathologist reducing the cost to just one sample. Let's refuel. And then we're going to go free up Sasser. And, um, yeah. Let's go get a free up Sasser. How do we get there? It looks like we, oh, it's not that far away, actually. We just got to drive downwards. I might not capture Sasser in this episode. I might wait until the next episode to do that. And also we can play around with like our... Um, we're, we're, well, we have the 1,000 influence, actually. That's good news. I probably should have gotten outpost because I don't have a repair kit. We'll have to be careful. Lounge is up. Good. I wonder if that's actually blood I'm tasting in the air. Uh, we'll make some more assignments once we get there. How do I get up? 
Okay, it's right over here on the side. Yeah, I, I'm gonna claim the landmark just because I think the landmark... I probably should have done it even in Mayor Valley. Even though the Mayor Valley landmark sucks, I probably should have just done it anyways. Oh man, I cannot wait to show you all the wonderful explosions we could make in this lab. You mean with the crafting still? Okay, so with this play art we're about to knock out, uh, this one is going to be a little different okay, in the sense that. My uplink tech. Now we can call in Cleo drops from the comfort of home. Yeah, yeah. Let that. Okay, whatever you say, guys. We're making explosives in the crafting still. You guys are super silly. Like I don't, I don't, I question whether or not you guys know. Did it, it wasn't even up here, was it? It's actually down there. Wow. I hope this isn't a bad idea. Oh god! It's a bad. This is a bad idea. Okay, it wasn't that bad of an idea. I thought it. I thought it might have been a terrible idea. Ooh, down. Ooh. Mm. Come on, let me free. Let me be free. There we go. We're free. It's kind of funny that this plague heart that's not even on in the, it's not it's just down below is actually like the, the cause of all of our problems like we can't claim sasser because of that. Okay. No you don't. Oh, more of them than I thought. So we're not going to use the gorilla technique here, and you're gonna, we're going to have to fight all of the respawns. But, you know, we're still going to kind of do it like, you know, do it by the books. Now, you could use a more lightning strike strategy. Must give off tremendous heat. I also, I didn't bring a plague cure, so we're, we're kind of... I'm, okay, this is how... I'll show you the play it safe method. The play it safe method uses the card. Because we're actually kind of improperly prepared for this. So what we're going to immediately do is just get in our car, like this. The Feral is already Sudoku'd. Now all we got to do is, so basically, we do, oh, we do have a cure on us. I'm, I, I'm a huge liar. Okay, I thought I used it. But either way, this is the safe way to do it. So as you can see, when we damage the plague, obviously a huge wave of reinforcements appear. Ow, that wasn't very nice. Didn't think a second plague uh, feral would show up. Uh, people ask, why do I take so many precautions on lethal zone plague guards despite having killed so many of them? Oh, because like it's like lethal zone. Unexpected things can happen. That's just the name of the game. Just the name of the game. Oh, look, he's already here. He's quick. I'm fighting inside the battle gazebo. You'll never defeat me in here. Don't even try it. Okay, maybe you can try it. Now, I'm pretty sure that Feral's not dead yet. Look at all of them now. Now the reinforcements are here. So like I said, you you can fight all of this, them off. Oh, did you see that little bit of a swerve he did there? He's like becoming like the Matrix on me. I'm gonna drag all of it. There we go. I don't think he's dead yet. I'm probably have to ignite him again. Now all I gotta do is uh, give him the uh, oil of Olay treatment. Ole! What an idiot. Now I don't know where these guys came from. Maybe they heard the uh maybe they heard the um You know, maybe they just heard something. So tired. Come on, just finish it up. Thank you. Get my stamina back. Here, have some fire, courtesy from me. 
No, set me on fire. Okay, we got this. Let's head back to base. Okay, we are home, and uh, let's see what else I want to build. Let's keep you building up. Um, I'm pretty sure I want to keep that, so I think we're going to leave that there. Uh, I don't know what we're going to put here. Normally, we would use a red talent facility here. Normally, we would put in the officer's quarters, but because we don't have that, we could also... There, there are certain skills we don't have because I normally would not use these. We could do a hydroponics, but we don't have utilities. Uh, we could also put a officer's... The officer's quarters would be pretty nice, but I think what it's telling me is that these, these, the way these current facilities are arranged is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a trade depot here, and I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade you. I'm gonna upgrade you, and that gets things going, which means the the staging area, you could choose to keep it if you just wanna knock out your building material losses. I don't think I will do that. I, I don't think, I, I, I think I'm perfectly okay with, um, with dealing with the material losses. There's other ways to do it, but that is one of your options. And yeah, what I really need is a, a Red Talon Officer's Quarters. That would really be the capstone here. That would really kind of finish things up. It's a little overkill, which is why I which is why I haven't even been using the Red Talon Officer's Quarters lately because it is a little bit overkill, and I find that it's not necessary. But that would definitely be your capstone facility to round out this build. Like, as alternatively, you could do a, a hydroponics. I think that would be the next best alternative. But, um, yeah. Anyways, we will begin wrapping things up here. I, I might, maybe I'll even do some daybreak. Uh, I don't need that many points, but I might even do a little bit of daybreak, grab some points so that we can call a red talon guy, and, uh, yeah. We'll see, though. Anyways, let me know what you think down in the comment section. Like the video if it was entertaining. Subscribe for future State of K2 content. Of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.